Je donne à présent la parole à Monsieur Karim Khan. Uh, Madam President, uh, Excellencies, uh, Mr. Secretary General, it's a great uh, privilege to have the opportunity to say a few words to this uh, August Council. Uh, this uh, is a moment where we must collectively demonstrate by action, not words, that the law has meaning. It is critical that the law is seen to be on the front line, protecting those most at need. As we speak, in Ukraine and in many other parts of the world, the most vulnerable that deserve our attention, children, women, and men, suffer in agony and insecurity, and the law is looked to for real meaning and for accountability. But this potential that I am convinced is latent in the law can only work by collective action. It requires determined focus by my office, by the court, but also by all of you. We must demonstrate in every location where violations are alleged and that the court has jurisdiction, that in any conflict there are responsibilities. Anybody who picks up a gun, uh, anybody who fires a missile, must realize that the law is alive and not in slumber, and that accountability is absolutely essential. That requires determined action. It requires us to renew our pledge from Nuremberg that there's no statute of limitation for war crimes and to march forward together. And Madam President, I'm convinced that if we coalesce uh, around these basic principles of humanity, these basic norms of conduct, the law can play an ever more impactful role as an anchor for peace and security in Ukraine, but in so many other parts of the world as well. Uh, since the beginning of the recent developments in Ukraine in late February, I have sought uh, to ensure that the response from my office meets the imperatives of action and focus. Uh, in the five days between the 25th of February and the 2nd of March, when I made my initial statement and then opened the investigation, we have moved with some purpose. And the fact that 43 state parties to the Rome Statute, one third of the uh, assembly in total, referred the matter to the court signifies not only the crisis and the concern that is expressed, but also, I believe, an understanding that the law has an important role to play. We're now at the stage of continuing forensic, objective, and impartial, sometimes very painstaking, uh, painstaking work to grapple with the facts, to separate truth from fiction, and to build a picture of what actually happened. Uh, in May, we made the largest field deployment that the ICC has seen. And since May, we have had a permanent field presence uh, in Ukraine. I can announce that next week, further members uh, of my office will also deploy to Ukraine to look in relation to allegations emerging from the east of the country. And building partnerships Embracing innovation takes many forms. New engagements with states, with international organizations, and indeed with the private sector. Hopefully this new model of a more coordinated, more effective partnership, a more coherent approach for action, will render this collective responsibility more effective. But the process of accountability uh, of collecting evidence and sieving it and weighing it and determining what is shown uh, is not simply an academic exercise. It is critical in order to pierce the fog of war, to actually present in a juridical forum the truth. And luckily we have independent judges and when we have done our job, we will in due course present matters to the independent judges of the ICC and they will further scrutinize our work very properly and decide 
where the truth lies. And this exercise is essential if we're to have confidence in the rules-based system. This function, and this alone, is the focus of my office. It's not a tool of politics. It's not driven by any other agenda than our obligations that are eloquently espoused in the Rome Statute and are underpinned with great eloquence in the Charter of the United Nations that created this august body that I have the privilege to sit in today. Through this work, a picture will emerge. And the picture that I've seen so far is troubling indeed. I have been uh, to Ukraine uh, three times, and one has seen a variety of destruction, of suffering, and harm that forti fortifies my determination and my previous finding that there are reasonable grounds to believe that crimes within the jurisdiction of the court uh, have been committed. Uh, and if I may, Madam President, be quite direct, uh, when I went to Boucher and went behind St. Andrew's Church, the bodies I saw were not fake. When I walked the street, streets of Boryadenka, the destruction that I saw of buildings and schools was all too real. Uh, and when I left Kharkiv, the bombs I heard land gave a very somber insight and a very small insight into the awful reality that is faced by many of our brothers and sisters and children that are in a war zone. I am deeply concerned regarding the allegations and the information we are seeing regarding what appeared to be uh, reasonable grounds to believe intentional targeting of civilian objects, uh, and also the transfer of populations from Ukraine outside, particularly children. These are priorities that we are focusing on. But our task collectively is to ensure that those responsible for any crimes that may have been committed, for any uh, decisions that judges of the ICC may make, realize today, in real time, that they're masters of their own destiny. They have the choice and indeed the un, uh, ambiguous responsibilities to act proportionately, to honor the principle of distinction, and to take all means necessary to make sure civilians and civilian objects are not targeted. Uh, justice, as I've said, is not political. Uh, it is a vindication of the fundamental rights of all members of humanity. And it's a demonstration of promises that underpin the Charter and the Rome Statute. And in my view, the echoes of Nuremberg should be heard today. The failure to uphold the promises of Nuremberg that we have seen over the last many decades should act as a reproach on all of us. But leaders, not to despair or to despondency, but act as a catalyst for further action, to regalvanize us as a council, as international organizations, and as humanity, to finally, for goodness sake, to come of age and plag, plant more firmly the flag of legality on the international landscape. So today, all I can do is recommit to my obligations and my oath as prosecutor of the ICC to do everything I can to engage with all international partner states, the United Nations, other international organizations, to investigate cases within our jurisdiction in Ukraine and beyond. Uh, the responsibilities that I hold and the much more powerful, much more relevant, and much wider responsibilities that you hold demand no less than we meet the challenges of today. We must demonstrate the resolve and the determination and the principle in order not to disappoint and fail those that are in most need of the law as we speak. Thank you so much.